Hey everyone, it's Randy Coppola. I'm outside of SpaceX Launch Control Center right here at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Now, since this launch was scrubbed till January 6th, we're going to take this time to show you a little bit more about this groundbreaking launch that's about to take place. We're going to go inside the Air Force Mi History Museum, which is located right behind, and show you an up-close view of what's going to take place on this new rocket. Hey everyone, it's Randy Coppola, U.S. Launch Report. Well, as promised, we're here at the Air Force Space and Missile History Center, which is right outside the base at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Now, SpaceX uses Launch Complex 40 to launch their rockets, and this is a great opportunity to show you the development that SpaceX has had in just a short period of time. These two models, which were presented to the museum by SpaceX, illustrates the development from the version 1.0 to version 1.0. This is the 1.0, which they expect to launch on January 6th, is supposed to be a reusable booster where hydraulic legs will emit from the bottom of the craft and is supposed to land on a barge. That is the future of space travel the way Elon Musk sees it, and it will be a huge stepping stone in space technology. The original Falcon 9 version 1.0, which was launched here, uh, was had none of these pneumatic legs, but was still in development at the time. The original 1.0 had just fins in the original design, but they were actually never used, and it was just a straight tube liter design. It was used to launch the Dragon capsule up to the ISS, and it was the first commercial company ever to do this feat. Prior to that, all launches to the ISS had been government entities. The main differences between the two rockets are 25,000 pounds extra thrust from each Merlin D motor and an additional 50 feet in length, being, giving the Falcon 9 the ability now in the 1.1 version to carry as much as one city bus up to low Earth orbit.